Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Eating While Broke. I'm your host, Colleen Witt, and today we have a very special guest in the building, influencer, comedian, musician, boxer. Mm -hmm. What am I missing? Father. Father. Uh Shout outs to the son over there. Mm -hmm. Um, In the building, Suede's in the building, and I'm really excited to have you. Thank you. Um, You were very passionate about cooking on the show. Um, for all our guests listening, today we are taping in Wheezy's studios. Shout out to Wheezy in West Hollywood. Um, but later on, we're going to have Suede come into Eating While Broke Studios and cook for me. So on during the interview, you're not going to hear him cooking, but we'll be able to edit it in. So it's gonna be crazy. It's going to be crazy. And what are you going to have us eat? It's called the Po Man meal. The Po Man meal. P O P O. <laughs> now, what was going on during the time of you eating the Po Man meal? Oh, the struggle. We didn't even know we were struggling though. We we was just living. It was just living. Just living. So is it like your mom, your or is it like after you're an adult, you was on the pole man meal? Oh, it's definitely something my mama put together. Okay. Mama them. So what are what is the ingredients of the dish? Um as it's, it's it's not many ingredients. It's ground beef or turkey, right? Mm-hmm. Ground turkey um, is an option. There's that option. And then there's uh canned tomato sauce. And then there's what we call the Louisiana Trinity, right? And that's going to be green pepper, celery, and onions. Okay. That's the Trinity. That's Holy the Trinity. Trinity. Louisiana, y'all know. So when you were yeah. saying that in your notes, you were actually going to cut it up. And- well, 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 we, <laughs> we got what they call season blend. I told you about season blend. Okay. That's an option because they have those the Trinity. In. Oh, so you ain't going to do the peppers and all that? Well, yeah, we, we going to do it, but oh, we going to okay. still use that season blend. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then what else is in the dish? And then there's corn and that's it. But you mentioned... Oh, no, no, cornbread. That's course. what I was going to say. I'm excited cornbread. about this dish because there's cornbread involved. You like cornbread? I do, even though I think I've never made it before. What? Yes, even though... But you <laughs> use the box one, so don't judge me. <laughs> That's a fact. Okay, That's but I'm fact. excited because it's different um, from anything we've had. I think we've taped over 70 episodes at this point. No cornbread. And we've not had cornbread. Oh, man. Um, Same with y'all. Where the cornbread people at? Yeah, you'd be surprised. We've only had chicken on the show like maybe twice. Oh, Lord. Yes, but the brokest dish I think I've had on the show would have to be onion rings. Hmm. Which, by the way, I, I sound silly, but I didn't even know you could make onion rings, even though you know you can make them. But, like, you know, I'm I always... Actually, like, saute them up in... Yeah. And well, I say, you, you batter that. You don't it, saute that, right? Well, no, they... Well, yeah, they batter. They make it, but... <laughs> sorry about the cough. It's just a part of my DNA at this point. <laughs> um, But... But yeah, so I'm excited about you cooking for me. You're gonna be cooking me dinner tonight. Right. You're gonna cook all of us dinner tonight, right? The po man meal. The po man meal. Mm-hmm. So take me back to what was going on in your upbringing. Your mom's cooking. What's your household looking like? Siblings. I want to know the whole backstory. Okay. We're gonna break it down. So um, single mother, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, father was around, but uh, scarcely. Um, uh, it's me. I have. Now, currently, I have two sisters. It was three sisters at the time. RP to my sister just late past last year. Um, but uh, yeah, mom wasn't. Mom was. Mom was hustling. Hustling. Mom was getting it. She is she like an entrepreneur, or she was working multiple uh, jobs? Multiple jobs at that time. Uh, later on in life, she was you know managing a few things, but she was always mom worked a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was just me and the girls, and then my grandma and my grandfather lived across the street. Okay, okay. So, so they were like helping her yeah, out. Yeah, was, was there a lot. And now are you the oldest, youngest? I'm the middle child. You're the middle. Mm-hmm. So did you ever get stuck on babysitting duty? No, nah, not really. My, my baby, we're not that far apart uh, in age group. So you know what? We kind of babysitted each other. Okay. You know, because it's all What's the age difference? Like a year or two? Uh, me and my oldest sister are your part, and then my baby sister, she's two years younger. Okay, so your mom had it tough. I'm mm-hmm. not going to. I just became a mom. She had it tough. Man, mom was working. She was working. She's, Getting out the mud. Okay, and you were from originally Lake Charles, Louisiana. Okay, okay, and then yeah, baby, growing up in your home, mm-hmm. um, 
she was single mom. You guys were growing up like this. Where did the inspiration to get into the entertainment business come? Oh man, we okay. Let me tell y'all about Louisiana people. Okay, what we do, we call it, we call it Josen, right? Uh-huh. And that's like we just sit around and clown on each other and, and crack jokes on each other all day long. That's oh. all. <laughs> that sounds like New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 <laughs> anybody with siblings, <laughs> that's right. all you do. So we just man, I have a very comedic family and a very um, it, we all like all into entertainment, but a lot of music. A lot of musicians, a lot of singers mm-hmm. on my father's side. But, um, and they all jokesters too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we it's a lot of singers. And so I was always into music, entertainment, and like we was church. Mm-hmm. So choir and, you know, I played saxophone, I played jazz sax. I played um, jazz band and saxophone growing up. Played what? For yeah, I did the saxophone. I did marching band. Okay. Classical band. Okay. So, yeah, mom was, uh, she was working. So it was like me and my cousins a lot. And we was always just, you know. Taking care of each other, doing things together, mm-hmm. or me and the, me and the neighbors' kids. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So then, what was the next pivotal moment to kind of get you closer to where you are today? Like growing up in that environment, you're joking, mm-hmm. you're having a lot of fun, music. Mm-hmm. When what was like that next step to get out of Louisiana? Oof, I didn't get out of Louisiana until like five, six years ago. And right? what what was that move like? What what made you make that move? Um, it was this influencer that I met named Do Gang. And um at that I was doing I was at that time I had a, a construction business. Still have it. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm a third generation cement finisher by trade. A what? Third generation cement finisher. What is that? <laughs> so um lay foundations for like homes, okay. patios, driveways, sidewalks. You know, we've been I've been I grew up doing I have a, a news clipping of me five years old with a like a hand trial. Okay. With my dad, like I would never think that. Dad, That's awesome. So, but you still have the construction company. Mm-hmm. It's called Dirt Divers Concrete. If y'all need some work done, but it's out in Louisiana. Yeah, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Okay, mm-hmm. so you're an entrepreneur. Of course. We didn't put that in the titles. <sighs> I know. How'd you miss it? That's the biggest I one. Know. I, don't, I don't know how I left that out. Yeah. I guess I, I don't know. <laughs> I that don't even think that's important. in your EPK. It's not. And that's very. It should be entrepreneur, fact. comedian. That's a fact. Just, well, I guess it, father should be at the top. Well, it should be at the top. you know, it should be there too. But definitely, I, I, I've had my other business I, I let go of, but I had a um, a low vit, a low vultures business also. What's that? So we would hang like phone cameras, TVs, like okay. security cameras, uh, like the checkout, the scanners at the checkout mm-hmm. system with POS systems. We changed those out. Um, it sounds like you can make money anywhere in the world if man, you have those skills. And that's what I was trying to hone at that time in my life. Mm-hmm. I was looking for a, a skill set that I can do anywhere because I didn't want to live in Louisiana. Why? Because it's so the poverty okay. and the the racism and the it's just tough. It's tough, and and I, I got a glimpse of it uh, through the TV of what you know life could be out, outside of where I was from. And then, because we don't travel where I'm from. We don't, like, we go to Houston and Pensacola. Okay. And that's it. Because we ride on the I-10. Okay. So, you know, we go as far as, you know, money can take us. We don't make a lot of money out there. So, you know, going somewhere where um, money is, uh, you know, people, people like, come to Hollywood, it really won't fit your budget if, you know, you're making 15 bucks an hour, you know. No, no. <laughs> I'm, no. I'm also, like, I make jokes now. I'm like, damn, why couldn't I have chose a cheaper city to get accustomed to because I'm from New York mm-hmm. that's expensive right. I moved to LA now I'm just like you know what I guess I'm just a big city girl I don't even know if I could survive the, in the, small, the country. small I feel like I could but then I would have like 10 hustles in a week because I would be bored but then the hustles would be like how far would they take you because how much money you make it you know yeah it's like you yeah. gotta find like two three good ones because you can't like diversify yourself because you gotta put everything into those those one or two good you know, hustles. Oh, okay. If you don't have a regular job, wow. there's only like four careers you can have outside of like. There's either oil refinery, like plant work, being like a nurse or a doctor, or like uh, construction. You know, I said oil, oil refinery, plant work is the same thing. Construction work, like have a like construction business, um, the casinos, mm-hmm. right? That's a huge. You thing. make Louisiana sound like a Detroit or something. It sounds like very. I never been to Detroit. <sighs> Boy, <laughs> I've been to Detroit. I was wondering, boy, if this was Cali, they cleaned this up within three minutes. Man, Louisiana is something. Yeah. It's a, it's a place. But our culture and our, the fam, the fellowship mm-hmm. and the food, mm-hmm. let's put food at the top. Okay. Say food, family and culture. You know, the fellowship. And we got, our culture is different. You know, because we don't have counties. We have parishes. So, yeah. 
Explain that. So, like, y'all have county lines. We have mm-hmm. parishes. Because, you know, Louisiana, um, in, during the Louisiana Purchase, you know, when they bought Louisiana into America, however that go, you know, I'm a little rusty on my history, but they didn't establish the, the, the you know, American ways. They they kept, like, the, the French, oh, okay. French ways. So it's the parishes. Okay. You know? And I'm from Calcasieu Parish. Okay. Okay. So... Mm-hmm. Five, six years, you said five, six years ago? Uh, that's five. Five years ago? Five. At I'm some point, you have this epiphany. You're like, even though I have this business out in Louisiana, mm-hmm. I want more. And you chose. I've always wanted more. <clears throat> and daddy was like, my daddy always said, oh, you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to be a millionaire. Like, since I was, I can't even tell you how far back. I could not remember him telling me that. Really? Yeah, my whole life, my dad's like, he's, and he was like, he was like, I had a dream. He was going to invent something. Like, he always tell me, like, I had a dream he's going to invent something. Like, and that's going to be it. And then now he's like, well, maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was your son. <laughs> <I> was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was like, maybe your son going to invent it. I was like, wait, I'm still here. Like, Yeah, I'm still. Dang, he's like, like, you're getting closer to the finish line. You, <laughs> we may have to retire your jersey that's next. That's a fact. He was like, let me, um, let, me, let me just push it on to the next Remind one. him uh, who KFC is. The the Remember the founder of KFC? I think he did he didn't sell that recipe until he was like 65 years old. Wow. And he was in, like in the car, going to every restaurant. He picked That's up this it. recipe and and eventually got it picked up. But he was he was an old man. Hmm. I always tell people that. Like when my dad's like depressed or something like that. You know, well, my I think my dad's now 69. So, you know, <laughs> I'm going to have to start making jokes. Well, look, you, you passed that line. <laughs> 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 but um, so okay. So what what happens before this transition? Because something must have triggered you to pull the trigger on the transition. Um, well, I used to ask my mom all the time, like in private, like, "Mom, you think I'd be a good actor?" Like, I used to watch like I'm, my favorite actor is Don Cheadle. So I watched like him, Denzel. I was a fan of Denzel for mm-hmm. a long time. I was like, "Mom, you think I could act?" And she's like, mm, "Yeah, I'm sure of it." You know what I mean? Yeah. She would reassure me, like in the back of my mind, like, "All right, I could act for sure." Like, I know I can act. So that's locked. You know what okay. I mean? So I started pursuing everything else, like music. Like, in the back of my mind, like, I know I can oh, act. Oh, so you you just said, okay, skip skip lessons. Skip, I'm, I'm, how I'm, do you know you can act? How, how did just, you face that, just, though? I just, I'm emotional. I have an emotional, like, placement in my head. It's like, I know I can go places in my head. I feel like I've been through a lot of situations. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm older, I'm like, dang, I had a lot of trauma mm-hmm. growing up. But I didn't know, you know, I had yeah. trauma. Uh, like situations where I can bring myself back to to put myself in like um, an emotional state. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm a cancer too, so okay. that might be part of it. You know, okay. if y'all believe in it or not, but yeah, I feel like I I can put myself where I, you know where I want want to be. So you can camera. tap into your traumas and they feel really real. Mm-hmm. And okay. even like excitement or or like joy or mm-hmm. you know, but especially pain for sure. But I just haven't it? had a chance to to show that yet, but I, it's, it's for sure comedy because like my whole family's comedy now. Well, there's so many questions from just that statement. Mm-hmm. But when going back to your tapping, how did you realize, like, when was that moment when you realized you could tap into it? Like, were you under pressure to impress the girl or something? You were like, tapped in, started crying. It had to be something. It, I was a kid. <laughs> I've been, oh, you was from little. Okay, yeah, okay. Since I was little, like, man, just it's, emotions was always been a part of my life. Okay. You know? I'm really good at hiding emotions too now. From being so emotional as a kid, mm-hmm. so yeah, and that I feel like that that there's your acting there, you know, um, from hiding, you know, hiding things. I like that you, as probably gonna sound terrible, but as a black man can say like, yeah, I, I have emotions or I'm emotional. Mm-hmm. I feel like guys every time I go on social media or anywhere, guys are like, oh man, your girl will leave you if you cry, cry in <laughs> private, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. yeah, everybody want to be a tough guy. For what? I don't know. For what? Mm-hmm. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't to me. I feel like women enjoy like uh, real, you yes. know, and they, then they can make their choice. Yeah, you know, they, they enjoy real. Them, this is what I am. This is what I'm about. Like, this is what you're going to get. Yeah. So make that decision, you know, and I yeah. can make this decision. Like, oh, well, I like him for this, pros and cons, but I don't like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think I can deal with it. Oh, I really want to deal with this. Like, yeah. this is the choice I'm making, you know. So yeah. that's the option I give. I'm like, this is what you get, the real. Yeah. You feel me? That's the best way. And don't mm. perpetrate. No. Never perpetrate. Never. Because you're going to get caught anyways. If you Even no matter how long you perpetrate for, once that year mark, you're going to find it hard to maintain that level of perpetrating. Man, I had this guy <laughs> tell me, this is like, 
I want to say two months, three months ago, he was like, he uh, <laughs> he catfished this girl for I think a month. He said with a fake accent. <laughs> oh my god! Then say like, one day he just he set up in bed. I was like, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> he had an England accent, like an English <laughs> accent. And he's like, nah, I'm done with this. And she's like, Where, where's your accent? <laughs> he faked it. I was like, Yo. oh my god! Did she ended up staying. That. Nah, he said nah. He was nah. over. He was he was done. Let me tell you something, because that accent that would win a lot of girls. Man, over. that's great. I, you the know second a, never, a guy with I, Australian I, accent walks in the room, you're like, "Hey, mate." But could you imagine, <laughs> like a month and he's like, "Psych, yeah, you leave." Because <laughs> a lot of the accent also helps him look more attractive. So imagine if he was like a D plus and I then mean, he has the accent. Is he is he is he wrong? You know, because like there's a few things women do too that make them look more attractive. Also. Like what? You better not say it's the makeup. I mean, not well. I mean. There's, there's, you know, wigs and, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. they've got the fake pants with the butts in them. And yeah, I've been very I fortunate in my life. One. And uh, <laughs> thank God, like, I'm I'm just now learning the world of wigs because so many women are wearing them with the fake uh, uh, edges, in there, edges yeah. which I honestly don't know. Then, it doesn't oh, look man. attractive in real life, in my opinion, but I don't know. Maybe I got to like stop it. with these makeup tutorials because y'all <laughs> just giving up all the sauce. Hey, y'all scaring us, us men out here, because we scared now. It's like, really? What? Have you seen those YouTube and TikTok? I, You know what? It doesn't make sense, because, okay, so I wear makeup, but, you know, you have your... your oh, they your, be wearing, like... Yeah, layers. they wear, like, layers, and they bake their face. They'll be, like, powder yeah. here and all that. Um, but I just got in trouble with my twin for not wearing enough Wait, makeup on my twin? podcast. Yeah, so now I wear makeup. I may, I wore makeup for you oh, today. Oh, wow. Because I usually don't. And my twin is like, I can't believe you went online. Did you see how terrible you looked? Put on more makeup. I'm like, okay. Shout out to the twin. Ah, uh, see? Shout out, Rebecca. <laughs> Shout out, Rebecca. She's yeah. a makeup artist, too. So she'll be, oh, she'll no. Be like, Are you, you got to represent for Rebecca. <laughs> yeah, but if she does my makeup, it's way more makeup. It's way more makeup. Whenever yeah, a makeup she artist, she does it for a living, so she got. Like, yeah, she gonna be like, "Oh, you gonna look good," but and in <laughs> like, real life, you're gonna look like you're caked up. I mean, we in Hollywood. I see things. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, some of them look good. Some of them, are cool. You know. Yeah. We'll, just stay, we'll say it. We we'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. So now that you had acting mm -hmm. off your checklist, you start mm -hmm. focusing on music and comedy. Yes. Why? Um, I just love music. I love music so much. Like, um, I, I heard something one day. Somebody said, like, music is the only thing that you can't control. Like, you can like you can't stop from hearing it. Like, because you can't like you yeah. know what I mean. If you're walking somewhere, and something's playing, you are gonna yeah. hear it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you might you can cover your ears like after that, mm -hmm. but you heard it already. Yeah. So it's like it can. It's like so much um, a part of everyone's life, and it's universal. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can have songs like, I might not know the words, but I might know the song. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I might be somewhere with someone who knows the words and they, you know, and we yeah. connect, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's, I love music so much. So I started trying to find my own little my own niche and my own sound. And what you know, does that rapping. look? Okay, you were rapping. Yeah, I was hip hop. Because okay. I, like, I had a brother-in-law at the time uh, and he was like very influential, very influential in the city. Mm -hmm. He did like... Um, I guess he did his own like uh, YouTube shows back way back then. Mm -hmm. This was nineties, mm -hmm. so and I would just watch him and he bring me everywhere. I mean, all like to, to me were famous rappers at the time, and this is like Southern Houston rappers. Cause mm -hmm. remember, I'm two years, I'm two hours away from uh from Houston, mm -hmm. so they're very heavily influenced on my city. So is New Orleans, so I got the, like the best of both worlds. Mind you, I don't have like a heavy accent, mm -hmm. but I've also been working on not having an accent for like the last five years, also. Okay. What acting? Okay. Um, just working on my pronunciation and everything. And someone was like, "Pronounce, pronounce your words. Say it with your mouth." So that's what mm -hmm. I've been doing. But um, I met a lot of famous artists back then. It was like Zero. I'm not, not sure if you know these artists. Like, um, uh, DJ Screw. He started like the whole Screw scene mm -hmm. and um, uh, Slim Thug, Mr. Three Two. Uh, Man, that's the Swisher House. These are like mm -hmm. popping names back then. Like okay. I'm meeting these people in person. So I'm like, I'm kind of starstruck, but I'm getting used to being around celebrities at that time, you mm -hmm. know, in my small city. So I started getting the the bug of like, oh, being around celebrities, I can do this. Like I can be, I can have that status. I can yeah. have, you know, I, I I deserve that status at that point. I'm around it at this young. And this is my brother-in-law. He's this guy, Mr. K Dog. Shout out Mr. K Dog. 
And uh, I feel like, you know, that it's just part of who I am, you know, it just, just it was instilled in me. Because mm-hmm. he was kind of like a father figure to me at the time. I looked up to him and uh, I just, everything he was teaching me, was cause like I said, he had kind of like a YouTube. Mm-hmm. So he would go around and interview and then oh, he would okay. like host all the big events and the war shows that we would have. He would host them. So like he was cool with all these people. And I, I kind of got like my value with them mm-hmm. through him. You know, I had my my cred in the entertainment industry and that in that area through him. So growing up, I when I wanted to be a rapper, I had like these guys that was, you know, real big big in my city. I could just walk up to and be like, I'm K Dog little brother, you know? Mm-hmm. Like put me on, like Yeah. And then I'm from the side of the town where I'm from, it's a lot of Caucasian people. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it was like everybody's like, oh well, he ain't hood, he ain't gangster. I'm like, oh no, I'm K Dog, I'm K Dog little brother. Like, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all gonna respect this. So I started doing that and started involving myself heavy into that side of town, getting more involved, more involved, more involved, more involved. And it just kind of bled into my life a lot more. Okay. So I started kind of living that lifestyle a lot more. I'm heavy in the streets now. Okay. So at that time, I meet an influencer um, named uh, Dugang. And <laughs> uh, shout out to Dugang. He's, he's, char- he's, he's a character. So uh, Dugang, Dugang is crazy. I used to say, I don't know if I could. I could, I could you can say whatever you want. All right, I used to tell Dude Gang, he let his balls hang to hell. I was what? like, bro, you nigga, you let your neck, your nuts hang to hell. Like, what did you mean by that? <laughs> like, he, this dude, he ain't scared of nothing. This nigga is not scared of. Nothing. Give me an example, though. All right. So, the first prank he did, right, mm-hmm. that with me, mm-hmm. I didn't go in there, but I brought, I brought. <laughs> This sounds like it's going to be good. Oh, my God. So this kid, <laughs> let me sit up. This kid walks. He had this thing that he would do. You know, I have a, a mom looking for their kid or screaming the kid's name. Mm-hmm. He would go into public places and stand on the top of, like, <laughs> of any the, the highest thing he can find in the building <laughs> and scream, Chris. 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 <laughs> and then fall on the ground and start shaking. <laughs> Why though? Because like he was scared that he was well, he gonna lose someone, his kid. He would have someone recording him. Okay. So he was trying to go viral. Okay. But it was working. Mm-hmm. Like he started like a gas station, mm-hmm. and then he went to the college. Mm-hmm. And then um, so this is when he meets me. Okay. And I'm like, yo, bro, I don't know why I tell him this. I'm like, yo, if you really want to go big, because I've always been like a, a manager type person. Mm-hmm. I help people like, because I when I started my music career, I started doing um. These uh these what they call go DJ conferences and these conferences I'll go to these conferences and start learning music business. Okay. So I really started involving myself in the music business side first. Okay. Smart. That was because that's a crazy business. Crazy business. So I went there first. Yeah. So I had all this knowledge about music business. So when I met him, um, I was like, yo, if someone manage this kid. He'd be crazy because mm-hmm. like this viral stuff's going on. So he's like, I was like, yo, if you want to go crazy, bro, you gotta go over the top. Next level. I bet you won't go in that Pentecostal church and do that. It's the biggest Pentecostal church in the neighborhood, in the in the city. You told him that? I dared him. And he did it. Oh. I, I clearly, because you said his he, balls hang to hell. What'd you say it was? Oh, my God. Listen. <coughs> he. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. This kid walked in that church. church. It's at least 300 people in there. Like, I'm, I might be over exaggerating. At least 100. Mm-hmm. Like, at least 100 people. I'm, I'm like 300. It's at least 100 people. In there. Mm-hmm. So he walks in there and he's like, everyone's sitting down and the pastor's preaching. Mm-hmm. And he's on all the, the you know, the screens, mm-hmm. the tele, the, the, mm-hmm. the screens. And uh, he's he's walking, he's beelining to the stage. Oh, my He's beelining goodness. like, he's already past security, the, the usher or whatever. He's beelining like, and now mind you, he's a tall, light-skinned Kid, blue eyes, face. Tats. He's a white kid. Nah, he's a, he's he's a, a, he's, he's, a, he's, he's, a, he's a black kid. We call him red bones in Louisiana. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he red bone. You mm-hmm. know? So listen, he beelines <laughs> to the <this> stage. <laughs> gets the pastor is at this point. The pastor is still preaching, looking at him. He's next to the pastor. And he screams, Chris. <laughs> Chris, where are you? I got the pizza rolls and everything. <laughs> <laughs> They tackle him, no way. <laughs> spear him off the stage, <laughs> hog tie him, bring him outside, put him on a stretcher. Yes, goes to jail, 
makes from the, the news. church. From the church, straight to jail. Yes. And it's all being taped. Man, this guy made the news that day. That's just, yes. that's hilarious. Hilarious. How did the video do? Oh, he went, he was viral. He was viral. That that was the one of maybe three antics that this kid made the news. Wow. Mm-hmm. And that was your That was my first influencer client right there. Wow, wow. Yeah, he was crazy. Over the top. Wow. Over the top. And you know what? I wanted to, and I I didn't get to mention it in the beginning, but I was intrigued by the notes in your EPK about how you were teaching courses and mm-hmm. uh, influencers. But mm-hmm. we're going to table that. Okay. Because I still want to keep up with the story. Okay. But don't let us close out without me talking about okay, it. I got it. But, um, okay, so you tackle music. Now you're you're starting to engage with influencing. Mm-hmm. And then what is the next step? Because I see you skipping over acting. So oh, yeah. the next one is music. Well, then you did influence. Acting came last. Yeah, acting came last. Mm-hmm. So what was the next step after the, uh Well, the influencer thing came next. Um, and that's when I'm like, okay, I'm not doing skits yet, sketch comedy yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm watching him. Mm-hmm. You know, and he his his type of uh his type of skits or or content per se isn't um sk- sketches yet. Mm-hmm. It's like wow, yeah, reality stuff like. But clearly funny because I would have. Oh my! I would over the, love to see that video. So funny, like he's a Louisiana, like mm-hmm. over the top, right? So um, and is he you, at the time? Is he making money or is he just getting we, the likes? We po boys. We thugging like I, like we were saying. We thugging. We in the streets. Okay. Like I have my construction business at the time, but I ain't gonna lie to you. Like I'm, we living in the projects in a three bedroom apartment in the projects. Like, hey, my son. Like, <laughs> like I got my business. We go to work at four a.m. every morning, but like a job, I make two thousand dollars. You know. You know? Yeah. And I'm paying him. Yeah. And my son or whoever I hire to work for me. Yeah. You know, out of that job. So that's how I'm surviving. Mm-hmm. So um, he's like, man, we gotta get out the hood, man. We gotta get out the hood, like. We can do this. We can do this. So he keeps saying that. And I'm like, man, all right, whatever. You know, like, we making money. Like, you going viral. Like, somebody will give us a deal or something. Or you should do stand-up comedy. Like, let's look for an end game. You should be an actor. Mm-hmm. You know, that's me. Right th- my focus. That's what you're telling him. I'm, I'm trying to get him in that, that lane right now. Like, you should be an actor. You should do stand-up. We tried it. He tried stand-up. Yeah. He tried acting. He was like, no, nah, I'm going to just do this. You know, like, okay. sketch comedy. Stand-up's not, hard. Stand-up, stand-up is tough. Assistant. It's, it's very tough. It's, it's a... <laughs> That's like a, I tell people like, it's to me, the music business, like the rap business and like comedy, it's like 10 years of you're not going to make a dollar and you're just working on building that craft. I feel like that's a, I tell my little, my little brother is very talented. Mm -hmm. He does that. He's amazing comic. You got to look him up. Eagle Wit. I think you've told me this before. He, I push him on my socials sometimes, but if you know me, he's, he's actually on Wild and Out. I'm not supposed to say this yet, but he, he's officially on Wallin' Out now, officially. Nice. But um, but I don't think it, we're supposed to be announcing it. I hope I, I won't use it as a clip until Thanks. you know. Thanks. But um, but yeah, he's a talented uh, stand-up comic, uh, nice. and he's very loyal to the. Well, passion. you didn't say his name yet, so Eagle yeah. Whip. Oh, no. Eagle no. Whip. <laughs> Eagle hey, Whip. Hey, Eagle Whip. I'll do tell some you. Content with me, brother. I'm waiting. Yeah, he's a he's sketches. a. Beast. Um, right. And it's funny because I have my friends that are influencers like mm-hmm. Daystorm and Janina and Leanne and all those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I've learned is that, you know, stand up comedy and the sketch, two completely. My influencer friends, I, I would words. say, make made more money faster than Eagle, but Eagle's Eagle's a beast. Like I tell, I tell even him, I'm like, you're going to be that guy. Like, how kids looked up to Chris Rock. Mm-hmm. I feel like kids are gonna be like, "Yo, I want to be like Eagle." You know, nice. he's definitely gonna be a legend because he's he he straddles that that line so dangerously mm-hmm. well. So. And, it, and it's getting kind of the line is getting thin thinner because mm-hmm. a lot of sketch comedians are like crossing over. They and, yeah, but a lot of them can't cross over. Yeah, and what <laughs> what's happening is well, we like, let's talk about it. I, I see a lot of I see a lot of sketch comedians like getting booked, and I'm seeing their content, and it's not funny to me. It's not funny to me. Yeah, uh, like their stand up sets. I see a, I see a lot of uh, what do you call? It? I see a lot of crowd work. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do a lot of crowd work because technically, from like when I interviewed like B Simone, mm-hmm. she's a perfect example. She was she goes to where her fans. <laughs> 
or telling her to go. Mm-hmm. But I remember she didn't get into stand up till like they booked her for stand up and she was like, How much you pay? Mm-hmm. Shit. I'll come up with something. Right. And I think what you see is when you see influencers hit the stage, you see more of they got, you know, hey, I'm gonna pay you twenty thousand to come to this club. Mm-hmm. Club's paying them because they know that they can sell more tickets. Excellent. But it doesn't mean that, that they're gonna be funny. They're gonna be funny. Right. And, and, that, and that's what I <laughs> wanna define. Like, <laughs> I have an actual set that I work on, you know? Mm-hmm. I could do crowd work, mm-hmm. but I, I don't want to base my whole um, set off of me just clowning off of making jokes off of people that's in the crowd. Mm-hmm. I actually want to tell genuine jokes that people, you know, like like I want to have jokes that people will remember that classic epic jokes, you know, mm-hmm. household things like a, yeah. a meme, you know? Yeah, yeah. Something that everyone remembers. Like those type of classic jokes. I think they're like Bernie Mac mm-hmm. and uh, like... Uh, 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 what's his name? Oh, oh, uh, what was his name? J- Golly, J- Jermaine? Oh, no. Golly, we used to watch him all the time, me and my mom. But yeah, like, I used to watch uh, Comic View growing up. Okay, all yeah. All the time, so, uh, Jamiroquai. Jamiroquai. J- not okay. Jamiroquai, J- Jamiroquai. What was his I used name? to like John Leguizamo. He was my favorite back in the day. Oh, back, back in the, in the day? day? Come, come mess what with John Leguizamo. Name? God, it was in, it was you, it's gonna bug you. You're gonna get mm-hmm. in your car later, and your yeah, son's I'm gonna like, say it, and yeah, you'll be like, right. "Why did you just whisper it to me?" You're just standing right there in the corner, Thanks. son. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I, um, back to do gang. So yeah, I was telling him to do it, and uh, we started getting hit up by World Star a lot. And and by the way, uh, so so do gang real street, like he real street. So he don't really he, at that time. I don't say now because he's grown a lot. But at that time, he didn't really know how to, like, talk business. Okay. You know, he, he didn't, like, if you hit him up, and it was an opportunity, and he didn't see it immediately as an opportunity. He would just be like, F it. Yeah, no. he like, nah, I'm, <laughs> bro, who's this? And I'll like, oh, just ignore it. Wow. Totally. So, okay. like, I started running his DMs for him. Okay. So I'm running his DMs, and I, I'm noticing, like, a lot of up-and-coming influencers are hitting him up, mm-hmm. like, trying to work yeah, He's him. passing him up. like, man, I don't... <laughs> When she like, Sway, you can work with him. So I'm like, all right. Yeah. So I'm hitting him up like, yo, I'll work with you. I'm his manager. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, all right, cool. So over time, we ended up like linking with the, a guy from Worldstar. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Steve Alien, man. He's like, a lot of people don't know, like in like 2017, 2018, Worldstar is making a lot of uh, like sketch comedians famous. Mm-hmm. Like influencers, like literally. Yeah, yeah. Like they had a lot of power back they then. Had power. I mean, they probably still do. I just haven't been on the. Well, platform. it's not in that range no more because mm-hmm. I can tell you why. Because wow. I know the inner, I know the inner workings of this, and I could tell y'all why. Because nobody else. Said, now oh, you have I don't to tell officially us. work with World Star. Yeah. I work. I'm an affiliate. Okay. So I could tell y'all what happened. Why they stopped making people famous, and this is around that era, mm-hmm. right? So they had a guy named Steve Alien, and he was like, so World Star at the time had like, um, three three content. Guys, oh, I don't know if it was a girl guy at that time. I just knew Steve Avery was one of them, and so they would post three, three. These guys had jobs to post three different times a day. So then you had one guy in the morning, one guy in the evening, one guy late night, and they would post whatever they want. Mm-hmm. But they had like a, a method, you know, what mm-hmm. they would look for. They had, you know, a standard of what they look for. But if you were a sketch comedian, and they liked you, they made you famous. Wow! Literally, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, literally, because like. If if they're posting you every day, every day, yeah, and you're getting not just a couple, you're getting millions and millions of views. Do, Dorian, his name is Dorian. Dugan used to get Dugan used he he lost three pages in the in the time span of me me working with him. He would lose his page, and he would hit up Steve and be like yo, and then Steve, as long as the quality was there and it was funny, and you have Steve post him consistently, he lose his page. He'd be back at sixty thousand followers in two days. Wow, no joke. So, so I'm talking. You, World Star would post him. He would turn his phone off. We'd go to sleep at night. Turn his phone off. He'd wake up forty thousand followers, sixty thousand followers, eighty thousand. Wow! Miles. Like nothing. And you guys had to straight connect. Straight connect. So then, what happened? So, what happened was. <laughs> 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 so this is when it get it got shaky for us. And at this time, it's like I'm starting to try to like, oh, hold up. Let me get in this influence and stuff too. Let Hell me, yeah. yeah, let me do some skits too. Like, all right, Steve, if this is what you want, because he's telling us what what he want to see, like mm-hmm. how to like the the format, like how to post it, what he wants to. Not, like, it's a format to it. So it's a formula to this work, to this to this content stuff. I tell a lot of people they think they just 
just shoot stuff. It's cool to just shoot shit because you want to start. That's how you want to start. You want to just start shooting. Have the content. Yeah. Because if you ain't got to post it, yeah. have it because you're practicing. You know, you're getting oh, ready. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? And okay. then you get better because you start critiquing yourself if you're really serious. Mm -hmm. And then you start like, you know, paying attention to everybody else that's doing it. You're like, oh, that's how they did this. And that's how they did You work with other influencers. You get tips. Oh, what do you use to edit? Oh, this. Oh, this. I got influencers that use the same editing programs from five years ago. And then I, I meet new influencers, then they're using the same editing programs that these newer influencers are using. So I'm like, oh, let me get that. Yeah. You know, let me learn this. Yeah. So that's how I was able to keep up. But what Steve does is, um, <laughs> so um, Steve is uh, the guy that I know that's, mm -hmm. that's supposed to. And so what I started doing is start, I started paying attention to Steve and what type of influences he liked. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I was like, oh, Steve, like these type, I can manage these. I can make money. Like, I'll start a management agency, managing influence. You a hustler. I'm on it. You that should have, entrepreneur should have been at the top of your list. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm like, I whatever like it. Steve do, I'm going to do. Okay, you so you're paying attention. I'm paying attention. I'm learning. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, I'm like, all right, I'm watching mm -hmm. Steve. Well, Steve, Steve fucked up, okay? I don't, he didn't get fired. And I don't know what happened. I don't know. He might have got fired. I don't know. I just know he's still around. He's still fucking with him, but... Uh, Steve had uh, I don't know if he got drunk or whatever. I don't know what happened, but Steve had posted himself one day, like <laughs> posting himself to who what? <laughs> he was like taking like a, a hookah toke and like I don't know. Steve was on some bullshit. <laughs> Steve fucked it up for all of us. <laughs> so you, but nah, you but went they, ahead and you did create the. You started managing the influencers and start punning. So I'm, I'm on it. I'm I'm in the DMs of Dorian. <laughs> Dorian's hot. He's on Worldstar, which brings me to, which brings all up and coming influencers to his page, mm -hmm. to his his DMs. Mm -hmm. They're coming from Steve. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yeah. So I'm I'm pipelined. Okay, awesome. So I'm I'm uh, and I can name drop. I'm, I'm the Fox Out guys from Denver. Uh, um, I meet the uh, the Long Neck guy. You know, I mean, I'm in. I'm meeting. Uh, uh, shout out to Long Neck. Uh, um, why? Like, I mean, just recently met Wine Neck. Well, Gucci Berry. These are influencers that are now. Now it's another. Now it's another. We're in another level now. We're in another influencer. Um, uh, I say era now. Cause, yeah, yeah. Because you know this influencer, this 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 uh, social media world is quick. Yeah. Within three, like three months for us on social media is a year. Damn near. You follow me? It's like it goes. Wow. It's like. Oh, because it's, it's so the, quick. The career is over that fast. Or is, it, everything's because it, 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 it's so fast. It's like today's news. Mm -hmm. Next week, nobody might not care. Yeah, yeah. It's that fast. But it wasn't that fast. It first started gradually getting faster and faster and mm -hmm. faster and faster. Now we're at the point where we live streaming now. Yeah. No? It ain't about um, yesterday's content. It's about the right now content. Uh, it used to be about the last week's content. Yeah. It used to be about last month's content. Yeah. Before that, it was like last year's content, you know? Yeah. Because it wasn't, no, it was social media. Instagram was pictures. It wasn't yeah. videos. We didn't know what was happening right now. You know? So it was like things are things are graduating. And I'm graduating with it. I'm like, okay. You have oh, to be able to adapt so yeah, fast. Quick, yeah. quick. And then, um, so this is happening. So I'm like, um, all these influencers are, 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 are I'm building relationships with now. Mm -hmm. So me and Dorian was like, all right, let's get out of here. Let's go. So <laughs> and then I, where do you go? So I, I had my savings, and Dorian was just like saving up too. And I, I didn't know, but he saved up before me. I had my savings already, but he had, we were saving up. And then Steve was like, come meet me in uh, Miami. And he's like, all right, let's go. I was like, man, we got to visit or to stay? Man, he, I don't know. <laughs> he like, let's go. He said, Steve said, pull up. And I'm like, w what are we doing? He's like, man, I don't, I don't get in the car. I'm like, bro, we can't take my car. It's a hoop. They're like, mm -hmm. So we, I meet this girl. <laughs> I'm talking to this girl. Story is about to get better. The second the girl answers, it gets better. <laughs> I'm talking to this girl, you hear me? She got like a, she got a, she fucking with me. So, uh, <laughs> she got paper. Yeah. Okay. 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 She lit. So she like, I bring y'all. Y'all wanna go to Miami? Come on, let's go. We like, let's go, bro. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So we jump in the car. So we pull up. We go meet Steve. At the time, he, he uh, Dorian here had another another guy. He was working like. Like his like I wouldn't call him like uh, uh, What do you call him Like a role manager mm -hmm. Cause like he wasn't with him I guess I would be the role man I don't know One of them But he was like the other guy mm -hmm. You know what I mean He knew stuff that I didn't know Cause I'm like Coming from out of Louisiana You know I don't know too much about I don't know no, no enough people 
outside mm-hmm. of the entertainment industry in Southwest Louisiana and Houston areas like that. I ain't never been nowhere. So I was like, I'm depending on him to make those, you know, those connections. And um, so we go meet him. We stayed with him in the Airbnb for like a week. And, uh, you know, we had a, he happened to meet with Steve. I don't even meet Steve that day. So I just have to talk to Steve through his, his DMs and stuff like that. So um, he was like, I'm staying. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was like, uh. Okay. And I'm like, where are you going to live? Where are you you sound like his mama. Sir. Well, what's the plan, sir? sir? Like, I'm staying <laughs> where, sir? Mm-hmm. I'm you know not, the Airbnb's up in 12 hours? <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding you. True story. This nigga's like, shit, I got fans. I'm like, what you mean? You finna live with your fans? He's like, yep. <laughs> I'm not making this up. So wait, wait, what did he do? Did he really live with his fans? Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He did. True story. I don't know why he don't tell this story. Like, That's true story. That's an amazing story. And he inspired me to do it next. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you post? Which one? One of my no, no. true so, ride or die? What I started doing is I started doing my own content. By then, now now I'm doing content. Mm-hmm. But I've learned I've learned that I would be um, I was detrimental to a lot of his content because I would come up with great ideas for his content. I'd be like, bro, you do this because he's already fire. So mm-hmm. I'm like, if you add this and this, or you do it this way, and he's like, oh shit, and like no no. So I was always record. I recorded like. 80% of his videos at that time. Okay. I'm recording it, so I know how to angle. I'm, boy, I'm nice. I'm getting okay. good with it. Are you editing yet at that time? And he He's teaching me how to edit. Okay, at okay. That time. He's giving me the sauce. Okay. So I'm learning. Okay. So like, I'm like, oh, I'm learning how to do it. Like this, all right. Yeah. So I'm getting real good at it. Like, And, and I'll tell you, like, someone who holds the camera for the, for the influencer, they don't get enough credit. And I want to say that to any of you, any of you guys out there, that your your friend has became famous and you was the guy holding the camera for him, like perfect angles and killing that shit, salute to you because they don't never get credit. They never get credit. And that's, you kind of like the DP. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You making sure that they look good. Yeah. And you didn't get no credit. I was that guy for so long and it burned me up because all those World Star videos were my video. I shot them basically. And then you you don't even get like the actual tag credit, right? Sometimes, but who cares? You know, it's like, who cares? Like, they like, like, oh, he's cool, whatever, but who is he? But how can the person behind the scene walk away feeling valued if you're saying that the tag credit isn't that? I feel like the value comes from the the partnership. Like, the guy that you're, you're filming, like, that loyalty needs to be there where he establishes, like, this guy is important to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Maybe give him a character or something. Yeah, yeah. That you call him or something. Like, give him give him something so he can brand and market himself and give him something. I like value. that. Yeah, I was You're that guy a great for so entrepreneur because that's what, like, the number one thing that entrepreneurs always overlook, which is the most important, is HR. HR is actually the top of your company. Facts. People overlook it, but it, it's not just about making money. It's your team and how well team, you take care man. of them. You find that one good person mm-hmm. and you truly show so much loyalty and remind them consistently that mm-hmm. you value them and that you would rather mm-hmm. have them over more profit. That's where you got to be because it's so hard to replace an A player. Your network is your net worth. Mm-hmm. So... And, and, and you know, where I'm from, it's like, it's crab in a bucket mentality. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, and I stand on it. It, it, it. That aggravates me a lot. Like, that's something that's instilled in me. Like, where I'm from, it's crab in a, like, literally, everyone says that. It's like a subconscious thing. Mm-hmm. Like, we speak it into existence where I'm from. I hate that. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. we all say it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's what we are. Yeah. You know, so my mentality is, is like, get the you know what I mean? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And not only do that. Yeah. Take take some. Then not only do that, go back and get more. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's from there. He's yeah. from there. Oh, they're all from there. Yeah. Well, Spud's from uh, he's from Alabama South though. Okay. You know what I mean? But he's from my hometown. He's from my hometown. Okay. You know, I've had artists from my hometown. I have interviews on the radio out here. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, no, pull up. Okay. Interview us both. Nice. You know, I've literally done that. You know, and, yeah. and like I'm standing on that like. Being from a small city. Oh, dang. Dang, you're so good to interview. <laughs> really? We only got five minutes left? Oh. 
Damn. Wow. We even get to the meat and potatoes. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Damn. That's tough. <laughs> Your story's too good. Okay. Okay. How are we going how are we going to maximize our last five? <laughs> we should have booked the four. Um <clears throat> we can't go over at all, huh? You would have to talk to Clara and then uh, you, you, yeah, you just have to talk to Clara. Okay. 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 I can give you a short version of then. Give me the short version. Damn. How we get here? Okay. Short version. What end up, ends up happening is uh Dugang ends up meeting a girl out here. Staying with her. It's like, I need you. I'm staying with some influences in Denver by now. I didn't. Oh, you and went to Denver. I'm, on my, I'm Denver. Then I go to Miami. Mm-hmm. Then I go to Vegas. Then I go to Kansas City. Like, I'm on it. You're bouncing around. I'm, who want to let me live with them next? Everybody I go to, I'm like, we really... finna make world star. I know how to do it. <laughs> and you're literally doing this off fans. Off Fans, right? And other influencers. And other influencers. So okay. called flu- fluencers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they would be friends. They became my By friends. By the way, I just realized that technically, since we're cooking later uh, in my studio, mm-hmm. we could still pick up the conversation. True. Facts. True. That's a fact. Because when you're cooking, I'll probably, now now we could pick yeah, up. I can give you the. Okay. I can give so you I don't want to totally rush it because I do want to hear the whole story. It's crazy. It get crazy. So I'm bouncing. Boom, okay, boom, boom. Bouncing. So is he. Mm-hmm. He's bouncing. Actually, he's on the run from the police because he mm-hmm. didn't did a skit mm-hmm. in Florida. Nah, they looking for him. He <laughs> he didn't he didn't flew and then he got on he got on the news and said, "Nan, nan, boo boo, catch me if you can." True story. This dude's crazy. True story. I, you can pull it up. <laughs> we got to interview. Him. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> True story. He really nan, nan, boo boo, the police. <laughs> so boom. yeah, before Charleston White, he <laughs> do Dorian do gang is the original nan, nan, boo, and he's a black guy. Yeah. That's hilarious. Young black man, young black man. He just had a kid. Shout out to him. He just had a baby. Uh, his name Do Gang three times. So um, he's like, "Yo, I need my team back. Mm-hmm. What's up? Fly to Florida. You can catch the couch. I mean, fly to uh, LA. We in Hollywood. Studio C. You can catch the couch. I'm like, on my way. Fly out here. I'm on the couch. He just starts. And you're one way ticketing it. You're I'm, like, I'm, okay, I'm I'm hundred percent dedicated. Got it. Let's go. Okay. Because mind you, everybody I'm, I've worked with, we've made Worldstar. Boom, boom, mm-hmm. boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. You know, Worldstar, Worldstar, Worldstar. So it's like, everybody, just, this guy can get you on Worldstar. Okay. Boom. So in this circle. Damn, I wish I knew you during the Worldstar Connect era. Oh, uh, it's Damn. tattooed on my face. Isn't it? It's on this side. It, well, I see a crown on. Yeah, it's the tattoo. Okay. Okay, wrong side. Wrong side? Lord. Okay. Like, I've been looking at cameras all day. Y'all can see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it tattooed on my face. Damn. So yeah, it's, it's serious. It got me out of the hood. Yeah. Like, why you tattooed your face with world stuff? It's like it literally it got It literally me out helped the hood. you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm in the CO real close now. I built a relationship with <laughs> Oh, are you still tied to them? Yeah, yeah. No, I, oh, sure I made you. myself okay. world star. Like, it's on my face. Okay. So I made sure that I got I bothered the CO, but he watched me for a long time. But I bought and then he So they still showing you love. Oh man, we didn't have we and him went to Vegas and took scorpion okay. shots and Okay. It's up. Like, that's my boy. I shout out uh, Danny two times. I shout out. I love him. He's great. Amazing. Okay. Uh, he's a COO now. Uh, rest in peace, Q. Uh, so, boom. I'm out here. I'm hustling. I'm, oh, my story is crazy. I forget. I meet this lady. She gives me a job at this um, this uh, special effects studio called uh, Losing Industries with uh, this movie uh, director named Todd Tucker. They give me a job as um, the uh, marketing manager and uh, social media influencer, uh, content creator guy. They give me that job. So now I'm learning production on this value. On a and different I'm, level, right, yeah. And I'm quiet. I'm mm-hmm. listening to everything they're talking about. I'm hearing the politics of Hollywood. I'm learning how to carry myself. I'm getting the value of Hollywood now. I'm like, oh, they know what we was doing with skits. Well, on this level. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to improv school. You know what I mean? Now mm-hmm. I'm going to classes. Now I'm like, okay, I want to act. Now I want to do stuff. Oh, now you're investing in your acting. Got it. Okay. Yes. Now I'm like, it's time. Okay. You feel me? Now I can be this acting. Because I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe too old. I'm 39. I look young. You I'm look like, hella young, by the way. When you said 39. 39 years old. I said, but then I'm 39. I don't look, we look good out here. <laughs> we look good. Black don't crack. Uh-uh. That's a fact. So I'm like, nah, it's time. You know, you got all these things under your belt. You know, you've been on World Star like countless times. You got all these connections. You and that's what the plug guard means. People are like, plug guard. It's like, talking drugs. Like, no, plug guard. I mean, I would say I put people together like Legos. I make the connections like puzzles. You know, I like oh, puzzle I like pieces. That. That's my thing. So that's what I, you know, I put people together. That's my superpower. Mm-hmm. I meet someone, I'm like, oh. Like oh that's one that's my manifestation uh I'm sorry mm-hmm. uh, you have a manifestation alarm yes three times a day three times a day and what I, do you do when it goes off I say it to the so it's probably what six o'clock right now yeah so right now I would say 
I am abundant in all things I do. Money comes to me easily. I will, uh, I bring light and power to everyone around me. I'm abundant. I say it six times out loud. Really? And three times at three o'clock, six times, six o'clock, nine times at nine, nine o'clock. Three times a day. Three, oh six, nine. God. Nope. I want to be mentored by you. I low key really? want to be mentored by you. I, I, <laughs> I've re- I've have like a couple mentors. I've never had a mentor that was like my age. Mm, that's, but that's, like you are so damn. Thank you, thank you. Like I'm still working on me though. I'm still. Working I mentor on me. so many people, and I'm a work in progress. But all my mentees pretty much surpass me when I'm done, and I'm so proud of them. That's what's up. I'm like all oh, y'all better guess, run laps around me. I guess these are my mentees, right? Yeah, here. I'm sure you are. Right? Yeah. Nah, nah, just just so he doesn't beat you. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I got my boys. I got my gang. This is my crew. I mentor so many people, and I I just started to think that maybe I'm just lucky I picked the winners, but all, all my mentees kill it. That's, kill the game. I'm it. so proud of them. I love it. Yeah. But yeah, I may have to recruit you on my team. You may Let's have go. to school me. Let's go. I, I want to do, I want to, since this Charleston White situation, and I, we, can, we can talk about that. I don't know if you know about that. Mm-mm. You didn't know I was maced by Charleston White? No. Wait, what? You didn't know this? No. I got maced by... I was supposed to box Charleston White three three months ago. He maced me. Did you what? not know this? Oh, my God. Wow. No. <laughs> I thought this was what the interview was about. No, the interview yes. was about knowing you. Oh, getting my to know God. Your no, story. Charleston definitely maced me three months ago. <clears throat> it went well, viral. Like, <laughs> Well, you know what? Remember this, because this is where we're going to have to pick up when right. you cook for me at my studio. Okay. So, guess uh, we are definitely going over the time slot, but we are going to throw to commercial and then pick up with Suede cooking for me in the kitchen. Oh, man, me. All right. Peace out. Okay, y'all. We are back with Suede in the kitchen. You are about to cook me dinner tonight. That's right. And I'm starving. But, you know, I heard there's a little bit of cake involved, Mm -hmm. so I'm excited. So just walk us through your ingredients one more time. So we have some turkey meat here. We have some cornbread mix, tomato sauce, corn, golden corn, and one egg, some water, a little bit of sugar, and some butter. Awesome. And milk. I think you said milk. We got milk. Awesome. Of course, the milk. So start feeding me. Oh, we got some seasoning. Oh, yeah. We got some, the Holy Trinity seasoning right here. <laughs> and uh, if y'all didn't know Holy Trinity, it would be green peppers, onions, and celery. But we found we found a collab of, of mix. Yeah. A lot, it, a lot of Cajun mix. And you know what, guys? It's my first time ever hearing about the seasoning, but it tastes really, really good. It's really good. I like it. Uh, I and like we got it at done. Walmart. Yeah. Walmart. We shopped at Walmart. We shopped, from. yeah. And this whole dish was like under $10 at Walmart. Very impressed. Um, I did not know that you can pull off a whole meal. I grew up on Walmart. With $10, but let's let's make it happen. We're Feed make me, happen. please. Okay, so let me let me go ahead and we're going to start with the cornbread. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take this mix right here. Boom. We're going to get this bowl. Put him right here. I'm going to move here. my pan that's around. That's your uh, drain oh, bowl. That's my drain bowl. Oh, that's my drain bowl. Take my I'll bowl be a little backward okay. chef. Got me, got you me hooked air. up. I don't. Here, yeah, okay. This area right here. Yeah. Okay. So we got our egg. We're gonna go and throw our egg in there. Crack our egg. Do it like that. Drop our egg in there. Hold on, I should put my glove on. I just went ahead and. Oh no, that's. I usually just use the glove for the uh, meat. Okay. So we got some milk. We got our milk going inside. Booyah. Like so. And then we're gonna add this cornbread mix. And the thing I like about this cornbread is, see, it's a trick to the cornbread in the South. What is it? We add a little sugar to us. Yeah, like, I see. You keep asking for more and more sugar. We like that. We All right, so, you know, um, we like to serve diabetes on a plate sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, let me drop my trash. Okay, yeah, so we like to serve diabetes on a plate sometimes, so um, I'm going to give you a little bit of that today. Okay. But I like it, it's good diabetes, though. Let's see if we can get this open. I'm gonna use the teeth. Do you want me to help you? Okay, yeah. I'll help you. Okay. I'll All right. Be, I'll be your, your help. Me. I tried to use the little tiger bite, but it didn't work. I'm gonna grab my whisker. No, oh, this is. I'm gonna use a fork. See? You gotta get good over it. Let's get my meat. Let's get scissors. No, I'm playing. Take my turkey meat, put it over here. You know, we should we should have me helping you for real. Yeah, you wanna help? You want to you want a whiskey whiskey? Guys, I can cook at home. Just so whip it, you know. whip it. All right, there, I got it open. So we you want me to we, just dump it? Yeah, dump it in there. Okay, there. 
You want me to whisk? Yeah, yeah, we call it whipping it. Whipping it. I'll whip it. No, it's whipping it with a D. Whipping it. What is it? Whipping it. Whipping it? Whipping it, whipping it. Is that for real? Yeah. Let's no, whip no, it. No, whip it. Yeah, there you okay. go. Okay. <laughs> she about to whip it, whip it, y'all. All right. Take it back. So I've actually, I don't think I've ever made cornbread. Okay. Um, you know, when, my, when growing up, you know, your mom, you know, back in the, I don't know about current moms, but you know, they make the cookies from scratch. But of nowadays, with everything instant. So. Next is the brown on me after we get our corn. We're going to put the oven on four. We got the oven on 400. Yep. Okay, we have we the oven preheated. Stick that in there when we get that in our pan. I'm going to get my pan over. And then it's, it's, supposed to be, it's supposed to be a little lumpy, right? Mm hmm. Because that's what it's, it's supposed to be a little lumpy. Uh, whippity, 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 put, whippity, whippity. Putting whippity, the wrist whippity. to work. Work the wrist. <laughs> back, All right. Back, back, in, back in my project days, you know. So is this batter taste as good as regular batter or no? Like, you know, when you. Do cake batter? Mm. Are you gonna add sugar? I'm gonna add sugar. I'm gonna add, what is this? How I many, what is this? A tablespoon? A tablespoon? I'm gonna add, I'm gonna let you add. We're gonna add two tablespoons. You can what? Fill, yeah, fill that bad boy up. Oh my gosh. There you go. Really diabetes, mm -hmm. that's crazy. We are all right, I'm excited in there. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It's gonna be good, you gonna like it. Oh my gosh. I ain't nothing like sweet corn. Do you have bread. diabetes by any chance? I don't. And I'm never, I never will. I'm gonna manifest that right now. Yeah, man. I, ha I have family members that have had diabetes, though. So. You know, uh, diabetes is kind of genetic. Yeah, I've heard. It. All but right, see, manifest but, away. But my, see, our thing about me, my dad has eleven brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry. It's all done. My dad had twelve brothers and sisters. It was Thirteen of them. And my mom had ten brothers and sisters. So it's eleven of them. Wow. And so yeah, I have a huge family. How many kids does your dad have total? Does my, my I'm not saying my dad, my grandmother. My, uh -huh. my, they, they are, you know, uh -huh. their dad had, my dad is a, has 13, I mean 12 siblings, basically. My mom has 11 siblings. Ten, it's 10 of them. I mean, she has. Did they repeat the cycle, though? Did they end up all having a lot of kids? Nah, mom didn't my, have a lot of kids. No, nah, she three. just had, yeah, she just had us. And then uh, my dad had four. So it's four uh -huh. on this side. So, yeah, we're going to pull him in there. Did he have three with your mom and then, or does he have like more? He has one before us and then three of us with my mom. Okay. Yeah, but like I said, he has 11 brothers and sisters, 12 brothers and sisters, and my mom has 10 brothers and sisters, 11 of them. I did not know it was this easy to make cornbread. They have a huge family. Yeah, it's, it's easy. This is stupid easy. All right. All right, there we go. Cornbread almost in the pan. Have, guys, let me know when you're hiring. You know, I almost forgot, but I think you're done. Did we butter this? Okay. Yeah, we okay. I pre sprayed it. Okay, cool. I'm a good chef mate. You now know, you if are. you ever need me in your kitchen. Yeah, all right. So we're gonna know. start browning our meat. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this cooktop on about four because I wanna start it low. Okay? okay? I'm gonna take my glove. Yeah. Put my glove on. <laughs> I'm gonna take a left I've hand. I've right had now. guests on this show literally reach into the meat with their bare hands in the middle wow. of the recording and I'm like, so now I'm just gonna keep a glove for y'all. Yeah, I'm gonna use this guy for now. Mm -hmm. He looks. I'm watching you handy. cook, ladies, ladies. I'm I'm gonna let you know what the deal is. You know, we do a little something, something. So use that. Um, I put a little little bit of oil. Mm -hmm. But but I feel like this meat will be able to make its own oil for what we do. What we're going for. Yeah. So ground turkey does. So I'll put a little bit of him on here, and then uh, we're gonna use it all. You're not gonna use it all? No, we're gonna. Oh. I'm, I'm just gonna, gonna put it so that I can just brown it. I just wanna brown it. And then we're gonna drain it. And we're gonna get to work. When was the last time you ate this dish? Okay, so the <laughs> last time I ate this dish, oh, let me see. No, I went home one time, probably three years ago, and my sister was making it. So I okay. ate a little bit of it. But last time I made it, it had to be a cool seven to eight years now. Okay. So, so you good. You in a good position in life. Oh, yeah. I ain't, I actually kind of miss doing this. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what's funny? Um, once you booked me to do the, the show, I actually, like, I had made, I, 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 did I see you the list that I made of? of, of oh, yeah. So you know, I was like, know, yeah. I went and bought, um, like, three of those meals. I was like, yeah, well, I'm about to make these again. You said you are or you're not? I'm gonna. Oh, for I'm gonna, real? Yeah, I'm gonna cook like two of them. I'm gonna cook one tomorrow and the day after. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna well do that. Because yeah. cause, you know, I got a house full of boys. Yeah. Because I be moving all my friends in from, mm -hmm. from Louisiana. 
So is, so is your house like a party house or is it like a just everyone who's focused come join the squad? It depends what, depends what day it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It really like depends that. on what day it is. Um, yo, are you familiar with uh, with Welvin? Who? Welvin. Uh, he made the, the theme D's Nuts. Oh, well, he, no. he he didn't make it, but he kind of like made it more known. Mm-hmm. He had did a joke that went viral on um, social media. Mm-hmm. Um, a Vine video. He would do Vine videos, and uh, he had one where he's like called his his dad. And he's like, uh, I think he said like, "Is your llama?" Or then you say, "You know who this is?" Like, who? He's like these. And he's like, "Who? D? Who?" He's like these nuts. <laughs> and then he like cracked up laughing. Well, he went viral for that, but um, he kind of had fell off, and uh, he had bad management, and he had some mental issues, of course. But um, and, he, and I'm not gonna lie, he. he he drinks a little mm-hmm. bit too much. He's picked up some bad habits. But um, I kind of like adopted him for a oh, while, nice. for like three, four months. Okay. And he would come over. Um, he would be on Hollywood Boulevard all day, and he would come over. I'm tearing up a little bit. We can get it going. He'd come over every night. First, he started coming like 2, 3 in the morning. See, I, I did like two, two or three skits with him. He didn't recognize me until I'd done like two skits. We, we made on Worldstar. Like one of the skits made on Worldstar. And um, so I would say, hey, man, you remember me, man? I did the skit with you. We made it on world star. He was like, yeah, kind of, you know. And but then I started um, seeing him more and more. And then he's very. Uh, he has this defense mechanism where um, he's he's automatically an asshole because people like pick on him and they 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 uh, they tease him because uh, he has a, a you know some deformities. So uh, and he's known for him. So they pick uh, automatically. They 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 assume that he's a. Uh, He's okay with it, mm-hmm. so he's built a defense mechanism where he he's 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 a, he comes for you before you come for him. Okay. So yeah, he did that a while, and then uh, he started. I invited him over. One day he came over. He seen how I was living, and he played the game and stuff. So he kind of came back like the, the week after that. Can't kick it. Then before you know it, every night ten o'clock because I have uh, the door buzzer where you can buzz it and it calls mm-hmm. my phone. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, who is this? It's me, Welvin. Oh. For like three, four months, so I was like helping them out, giving them clothes, I'm take baths, and and then we was just kind of cutting them up and cutting up and stuff like that. So, yeah, like my house is kind of like I just attract the broken, you know. Yeah. A lot of broken individuals come through because I feel like you know I'm a safe haven for like people that that you know if they're in Hollywood or they're not from Hollywood, you know somewhere they can you know go hang out for a couple of days or something like that. I've, I've rented my couch space out so much. I have someone on my couch now, so. Is it? I think earlier in our conversation, you were saying like you were we were talking about like you being you saying that you were like emotional mm-hmm. kind of. Uh, I know that came out a little different from the way you said it, but you had mentioned like you had been through some traumas, mm-hmm. and, but you didn't really realize you had been through traumas. Right, I didn't know. I just thought it was like I thought everybody deal with like the type of things. I I had a lot of. Um, I had a lot of severe situations as a kid. I had a lot of, um, well, you know, and it wasn't just me. It was like my siblings, me and my siblings went through some some serious, you know, things. Uh, and, and and growing up, you know, as serious as they were, uh, they weren't talked about, mm-hmm. you know. Can you give us like, a, give me an example? Well, yeah, it, it, it was a situation involving someone really close to me. Mm-hmm. Um, someone was hurt in a very dramatic way where it was detrimental to all of us for life. Right, because it affected us. Because it wasn't it the way they were hurt. It uh, it left a stamp. And it left uh, an imprint on the world um, to where you know it's nothing we can we can forget about. We can try to forget it, forgive them for it. But uh, and this person is really extremely close to me um, and me and my siblings. And uh, you know they hurt one of my siblings basically. Um, so growing up, we didn't realize. You know, that I didn't understand why um, certain individuals treating me treated me a certain way. Mm-hmm. And it was because of they were looking at me. They, I was held responsible for the things that this other individual had done most of my life, you know? Mm-hmm. And then not knowing, it would be like my peers or kids at school, they'd be talking to me. You know, they would call, say certain things, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Because I never had that conversation with my parents or no, no one. So I didn't know what they were talking about. You know, and it just affected me because I didn't have anyone to talk to about that. And I have no one to vent to about my problems, my situations that I'm going to because I was just the only boy. Because I got three sisters, mm-hmm. so I was the only boy. 
Yeah. You know, my father wasn't around, so uh, he was in jail. So he got out when I was, uh, oh, I was, I was probably like 11, 10. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, and then, you know, with my father, when he got out, he came out, you know, devoted Christian. So, um, and grew up like that. And he was kind of like raised to like a certain way. You know, in the South, we were raised like, Certain things you don't question. Certain mm -hmm. things you don't. Certain questions you don't ask. Certain certain things you don't. You know, you just because you know you, you raised around that 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 southern mentality where like even like racism. Like if you see this white person, you don't speak. Or if this white this white person say something to you, and you you better not tell nobody. Yeah. You know, so that that's instilled in us, us as black people too because you know you don't want to you know master to find out so things would happen and we would keep it in. In the family, we don't talk about it amongst, you know, other individuals. So it it builds this uh, stigmatism, I guess, that you know you just don't talk about stuff. You just it happened, and you know that's what it is. Yeah, the reason why I brought it up was because uh, <clears throat> I do notice uh, in the short time that I've known you, you definitely seem like you help a lot of people. And then like hearing that you do attract broken people, mm -hmm. I, I think that people that have been through trauma subconsciously do attract more broken people. Yeah, I feel like we can relate, you know, we can understand each other more, mm -hmm. even even with me living in Hollywood, per se. And like, I, I got a Hollywood view from my balcony and everything. like. I still, um, I appreciate everything. Mm -hmm. But it's like the value that I, I get from having other people s around me that understand where we at, where we come from, and like, let's get it, let's go, you know what I mean? Or, mm -hmm. what, you know, having someone that understands that around me, it just, it just affects me more. You know, and someone that appreciated more, you know, or even someone that, that hasn't had opportunity to be around something like that and them seeing it and be like, oh, this is, this is what's up. Like, you know, cause when I go back home, when I used to go, I haven't been back in a while, it's been like a year, but when I go back home, I used to like watch my Instagram and the friends I make out here, I watch their stories and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, that look like so much fun. Like I'm so intrigued like by the trees and the beach and the, <laughs> the, the views and the, the women and the, yeah. you know, the cars and the money and the, the glam and like it's so much stuff. Like when you're here, you're living, like I said, living in the now. It's like, ah, I'm just going hustle, I'm grind, I'm doing yeah. my daily, like whatever. I'm not paying attention to the horizon or the mountains or, yeah. but like when, you're, when I first got out here, it's just like, I remember the first time I walked down Hollywood Boulevard, I'll never forget it. It was like a movie. You know, now when I walk down Hollywood, I'm going down to get like a snicker. You know, yeah, yeah. Or like, like it, it doesn't phase you as as much. I know when I first moved here, I remember looking at the mountains and all that. Or like, mm -hmm. I would love to go to like Universal City Walk and all those places. But then I did move to Hollywood, and I like it was like nothing. Like right. it was so weird. It was like that was the spot to be when I first moved here. And then once I lived on Hollywood Boulevard, it was like. I never went down Hollywood Boulevard. I didn't even appreciate it. And I live the next street over, literally the next street over from Hollywood Boulevard. So, and I've been there five years. So I'm like so numb to, oh. Yeah. I mean, last night, I mean, and it's, it's so surreal since I was like assimilation because night before last, I think it was night before last, I mean, I went on my balcony and watched the, the, the police raid the next apartment, do run on the roof, helicopter with the, with the light, <laughs> chase him on the roof, like, the whole SWAT, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is LA. It's, you know, in a minute, yeah. in, in a moment's notice, you might be walking down the street as a butt naked dude on the corner. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Screaming. I, but me, myself, when I, at first, my first couple of years when I used to see them, the butt naked dudes, I didn't know how to handle it. But one time I was with my, my, one of my partners and he jumped out and started whooping them with a belt. What? Yeah, he started whooping the homeless dude because he was butt naked. So he's like, he felt disrespected. So he won't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he started whipping his ass with the belt, so I'm like, you know what? For now, if I feel like they get at least competent to to have their pants up, I'm jumping out and whooping their ass with the belt too, cause I don't want to see your I don't want to see your naked no, ass. You know what? <laughs> I, had, I had a meltdown when I was like 30, and I got placed in like, and I rarely talk about this, but mm -hmm. I'm not like ashamed of it anymore. But okay. I ended up in like a mental institute, mm -hmm. and what I learned is, I learned a couple things. One, mishandled trauma is real. It's it's right. literally mishandled trauma especially when you're young it's just i don't even know if it's really curable it's just like you got to find the best way to cope with mm. it but 
what I also learned is that mental health issues are real. Like when those people are walking down the street naked yeah. or whatever, I had a meltdown. I was literally hallucinating. I was like, Jesus Christ. Oh, I was like really? running through the alleys. And if I wasn't hospitalized and got rest and got better, mm -hmm. you know, who knows what would have happened. So now when I see people like on the street, I'm like, oh, you know, maybe they have schizophrenia or something. Mm -hmm. I was very fortunate. I didn't have any of those things. It was just severe lack of sleep. But, you know, the, I realized like when those people are like naked or, you know, doing all that stuff is, you know, they're, they're probably either off their meds or the hospital kicked them out for no insurance. So now... I just have more empathy for them. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel bad for our healthcare system. I'm like, why do we have such a sucky healthcare system? It's terrible. And I seen something the other day that guy said that like ADHD wasn't really a um, a mental disease more than it was of somehow someone found out to cope with their child their childhood traumas. Yeah. It was they figured out a coping that mechanism as a kid. Yeah. You know, don't look look away, you know? Yeah. Don't focus, you know, um, you know, bite this, do that, you know, yeah, yeah. those things as a kid. And then it's like ADHD, but actually it's just like coping mechanisms it is. that you develop <laughs> and, you know, it's part of who you are now. I know we're in an age where, <coughs> sorry for coughing in the mic, guys, but I know we're at an age where like single parents are like the new norm or broken homes are the norm. But the truth is, it's like it's not healthy for kids mm -mm. because you have one parent overwhelmed with a lot of workload and then kids can get neglected by accident or put in situations that they weren't you know they're not protected enough from mm -hmm. so i feel like the when it comes to trauma i feel like the world is going to just keep heading in that direction the more we have broken homes in my personal opinion yeah yeah you know. well with broken homes it's like you know I don't know, man. It's, it's a, it's, it's like that's that's a touchy subject, you know. Because it's like, what can you do? Sometimes, you know, you. Hit. I mean, you gotta. That's why I thank thankful for all the single moms out there. I'm not even gonna. Shout out to the single moms and that. single dads out there. I met single quite dads. a few single dads I, in my time. I've met a couple single dads. Uh, I was a single, single dad for a while. Yeah. Right. I had custody of both my kids. Well, at that time, I had uh, those kids. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I got more. I got five kids. I don't know if I tell you that. No. Yeah. Oh, it was just the one. No. No <laughs> way. No, no, I'll take They all got their own cash apps and everything. Trust me. I do a baby mama tour every year. Really? <laughs> yes. How many baby mamas do you have? Three. Three? Three, three different states. Three? Yeah. Three different states? Yeah. How is that possible? How do you keep up? <laughs> I go on tour. You go on tour? Baby mama tour. Are you serious? Well, I have a schedule. It's based off their birthdays, the kids' birthdays. Okay. So I always try to see them for their birthdays um, or have them, uh, like I flew my little son out here last time for his birthday. Mm -hmm. But I always try to see them on their birthdays. I gotta go down, I gotta go. So tour in Tennessee, so, so we wanna get into that? Yeah, go for so, it. So I got my first son, which is 19. I had, well I had him at 19, he's 19 now, I'm 39. Um, I had him at 19, got married, and then we had a daughter um, four years later. Got divorced th two years later, then met this wonderful woman. We had a son. We were together for five years. And uh, I mean, all these kids were, uh, were born in Louisiana, except for my daughter. I moved to South Carolina for her when I was married. Mm -hmm. So she was the only one born, born in South Carolina. Um, moved back, we didn't work out, split up. Met this wonderful girl. Uh, she had a son for me. And then me and her didn't work out after five years of a relationship, but we're still great friends, mm -hmm. me and her. Um, actually, I love, I, I still love her. She's, she's a great person. Great, great. We talk like all the time. Okay. She's, she's a great individual. Uh, just didn't work out. Just, we didn't work out, you know? Um, By so, the way, I haven't seen you season this meat and I'm deeply we go, concerned. We're going we gonna to season I'm it. We concerned. We're getting there. We're going to drain it, then season it. Cornbread sounds like it smells like it could be burnt. Hey, oh, I'm not you know what? Our, our cornbread is done. I'm not trying to judge, but I'm judging. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that. Let me get back to this corner. Come on, chef. Let me get to it. It, it is done. Okay. Yeah, you you saved the day. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Shout out to me not burning. <laughs> okay, perfect. Perfect. Almost got it. We almost burned it. You I just smell it. Turn off the. Uh, I smell it. Oven we and we burn. almost burned the cornbread. Okay, so cornbread successful. Check. Okay. 
Let's turn this bad boy off. Uh, stop. Okay. All right. Okay. Now you back. Now, in the now I'm back in the kitchen. All right. Now All right. We got the meat. Yeah. I'm, now I'm gonna throw a little We're seasoning. We're gonna see if this is an under twenty minute dish, under twenty dollars, under twenty dollars, under twenty minute dish. Now we're gonna throw a little seasoning in this bad boy. Okay. I don't got much, um, since it's turkey meat, we ain't got much to drain. We actually don't have any to drain since it's turkey. But if this was ground meat, we'd be draining. So we're going to add a little seasoning. Okay. Okay. You know what you so I've been doing. chopping and mixing. Yep. Chopping and flipping. Okay. So we're going to add some seasoning right now. Some seasoning to, the, to this. Are you a heavy seasoner? I season like a crazy person. Um, well, with, with Cajun seasoning, you don't want to do too much because then it'll okay. be really salty. Okay. So you have three baby mamas. <laughs> you do tours. You take care of your whole. So are you able to with your career right now? Are you able to take care of your whole family or? Um. I I do stuff with mom for mom when I can, but with the with having five kids, it's tough. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of people ask me help. I do family. Oh, I. And I've, turned, I've told a lot of family, no, I have five kids. Yeah. So it's tough. Like, um, and like, I, and they, and they vary in age. Like I said, so the middle one, she had one. Then, then we were together five. Then I, I met my last baby mama, and we had two kids, and they're two years apart. And um, I didn't start my career tied to the to these relationships. To my me and her relationship was like. Oh, right? Okay. So then the first baby mama moves to Texas. She moved to Texas a while back. That's when I had custody of my oldest son that you met and my, my daughter. So I had custody of them for a while in Louisiana. Then she moved to Texas. I had them. But then they got to a certain age and was like, all right, y'all good enough to go. So they go there. Uh, I am now single in the project. So my middle baby mama, she's originally from Idaho. She's like, I'm going to go live back in Idaho. She's a little more. I'm gonna go back to Idaho. I'm like, cool. You going back to Idaho? Cool. So she's in Idaho. And so I am now not talking to my youngest baby mama because she is very upset to me. I'm, in those days, I was not the guy I am now. I was very not, I was not a stand up guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just in the streets. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, yeah, I didn't deserve her mm -hmm. at that time. And I can say that right now. Um, so, yeah, she leaves me, and then she's not letting me talk to my kids, you know. She, the, the youngest two. The youngest two. She's not letting me see them at the time. At so, the time, but now you guys are all Oh, yeah, we're wonderful. Okay, we're good. good. So, yeah, she's, so they're not seeing me. So they, this time, this is when me doing. That's when we do game. Okay. So so now. Oh, that's when your career starts to. Because I can do that now. Nice. Because nice. I don't have no kids in, around me. Yeah, yeah. Two in Texas. The middle one's in Idaho. Uh-huh. And then now it's just me and she, I can't talk to them. Yeah. So when I start my career, she moves to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of me moving around and jumping state to state, she's, she moves to Tennessee. Okay. Right? So, yeah, it's just almost done. It's different with, it's different with turkey meat. It's not doing it with ground meat, but it's a different, different with yeah. turkey meat. It's more drier. Mm -hmm. It's not as like, right. yeah. Yeah, it is. But it's healthier. It is healthy. <laughs> so we turn it down a little bit. Okay, okay um, we're almost there. So yeah, when she moved, that's when I was like, uh, this is my, because I would have never took this uh, the chance that I'm taking, mm -hmm. these risks. Because I, I mean, I was a football coach, basketball coach. Yeah. You know, we were at the church every Sunday, I had my career, like, you know. And yeah, construction company and all that. construction, yeah. four o'clock every morning to get up to go to work. Like, because with, con with concrete, you know, you got to be, it, it sets. So the higher it gets, the quicker it sets. So you got to get up early and start real early while it's dark. Do you feel pressure like in the back of your mind like to make money ASAP because of all these of course because of your family and yeah. then the distance of you not being able to see them as much and it, it sucks too yeah, yeah I definitely I feel pressure because uh, the involvement like you said broken homes as so well I was like oh it's shaky because oh, I got three I didn't even realize you that. know what I mean yeah, yeah. that I gotta juggle through and then with with with, with that it's like this baby mom doesn't understand what's going on. She don't care what's going on with this baby mom. Yeah. You know? Like, they got, she want to do cheerleading. So, what's up? Yeah. And he over here, his birthday coming up. What's up? Yeah. You know, he want the Xbox, so she wants a new, a new bike. Yeah. You know, and I, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm like, I just paid $600 for this. Yeah. Yeah. Childcare is due on Friday. What's up? So... Yeah, and figure I know, it out. I know how it is because I know. Uh, figure it out. Even for me, like 
when it comes to my daughter, I can be like almost cutthroat. And it's, it's sad, it sucks, but we also have to be careful the way we talk to men. And it can be touchy when you know your kid, you are dealing with your kid every day. And then to me, I'm, I'm hella emotional, I'll tell you. So I'll get my feelings. And then, you know, two, or, two, or, two out of my three of my baby moms, we're still friends. So, you know, we talk about everything. Mm. You know, we talk about relationships and everything. So, you know, that can get a little shaky sometimes when you're telling everybody your person, telling your, your friend so that's actually your baby mama. Mm -hmm. When she needs something, she don't care that she's your friend at that time. Or vice versa. Mm -hmm. If I'm angry and, you know, I want my way, I might say something that I shouldn't have yeah. said, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we had, I definitely had to mature uh, with these relationships. I definitely matured me as a, um, I always tell anyone I talk to, like, yeah, I've been three different men. You know, I've been this type of guy, I've been this type of guy, and this type of guy. This is my, just the fourth me, you know? Okay, okay. It's the rendition of me the fourth time. You know, I've had yeah. four chances to change who I am mm -hmm. in life, you know? So this is me right now. So I think we're done with this. It looks pretty brown. Yeah, it yeah. looks good. Mm -hmm. What's the next step? You want the sauce, the corn? I'm gonna try a little bit of piece of this. A little bit of piece of this turkey. Yeah. See where we at with that. Mm, tiny bit more seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot more seasoning. Yeah, look, see, he's telling on me. Okay, so boom, flip, flip, flip. Um, yeah, I need it more. It's turkey. Okay, um, where we at? You're just talking about uh, how you've evolved as a man through these three three major relationships. You facts. Have. Facts. I, I, I feel like women has been the most detrimental situ like, like, you know, I was raised with women. I've learned from women. I had one of my mentors tell me, all right, so I'll turn this down now. So now we're going to add some sauce, some corn, and some water. So here we go with our sauce. I usually add a full cup, but since this turkey meat was so um, lean, yeah. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna have, add half. Awesome. Okay. And you want your corn? Yeah. Let's go with that corn. Let's get it in there. And then we'll add our water. Awesome. Turn it down a little bit. Let's get that mixed up in here. Oh yeah, this looks very uh, saucy. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is different, I've never had this before. It's called the Po' Man's Meal. The Po' Man Meal. And it's P.O. Mm-hmm, P.O. That's, That's right. what we're gonna name the episode. <laughs> the Po' Man the Meal. The Po' Man Meal. If you're from the like, South, you know. Po' Man Meal. There's a few, there's a few different Po' Man, po man Meals, right? Mm-hmm. You ever heard of, uh, so should I not tell them? Say it. It has eggs and rice. You ever tried that? Yep. Just I had that on the show. You had, had eggs, and eggs and rice? eggs and rice. Shout out to Mandy from Horrible Decisions. What <laughs> else you got? Uh, there's the um, pork and beans. Had that way too many times. We need to retire it. Well, it's pork and beans, uh, ground meat, and rice. Pork uh, and beans, ground meat, and rice. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's different. We've never had that. What's the next there's, one? There's um, peanut butter and syrup sandwiches. Had that, don't want to do that again. <laughs> uh, Wait, peanut butter with the syrup sandwich? Mm-hmm, peanut butter. You take the peanut butter and then you syrup, you mix it in a bowl. Okay, Louisiana has a whole new level of broke. Cause <laughs> I ain't heard of none of these dishes. I done taped like almost 100 episodes. Yeah, oh yeah, we got, we in the South, man. It's okay, so what's the next, is that Slum that's the city down ones? there. So uh, right now I'm getting my mix good. Mm -hmm. So the acidity in the tomato sauce I want to kill, right? So I'm gonna put a tablespoon of yet again. Oh, we'll put half a tablespoon because you remember the turkey meat is not as you and this sugar. The sugar, baby. Okay, <laughs> you can't be a diabetic and date sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you would actually die. We're gonna get diabetes. you some some sweet low. And put in the yeah. <laughs> put that you know sweet on that. Yeah, baby. We didn't use the butter. What was the butter for? The butter was for the cornbread. <laughs> but to go on the butt cornbread, or was it supposed to go in it? It was supposed to for the pan. Where, but we oh, but we greased the pan. Let me try to look. Yeah, it's for the oh, pan. You're, but. Right, you're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I can't little... wait to eat. Feed me. Oh, we almost there. It's looking like home right now. All right, ladies. He cook a little slow. Mm -hmm. I... Now, usually you can add this over rice, okay. right? It looks like something you'd have to add. Yeah, definitely add over rice, but we just, you know, oh, you can... Pasta, you, something. You can throw it over some pasta also, but... All right. We almost there. We almost there. Mm hmm Feed us. Do you want me to cut the cornbread? What you want me to do? Oh, okay, yeah. Cut you a good little slice of cornbread. Okay, here we go. Okay, hot. No, it's not hot. We good? You might need a bowl for this one. You don't think? It's, it's fine. Little, it's okay. fine. Gotcha. I'm going to cut a big piece, a little piece. Yeah, cut you a big piece. I'm going to cut right across. I like how fast that cornbread was doing. You know what it is? I learned in the little baby oven with the little baby pans. That everything cooks fast. Man, I'm gonna have to get me one of the baby ovens. Oh that my was, gosh, that was so this fast. cornbread looks so good. Do you want me to put a piece on your plate? Certainly. Okay. Yeah, this is cool. I ain't done this in a while. What, cook for a woman or uh, uh, cook a poor man's meal? Both. Both of them. B-O-F-U-M. Both of them. All right, here. That's some more Louisiana slang for you. Yo, this is um, delicious. And it's soft. Mm hmm All right, I'm just gonna, should I put more? I feel like I should put more. I'm just hungry. No, I think you're good. I'm gonna try a piece of your cornbread. Okay, go for it. Tell me what you think. See why we add sugar? Yeah. Mm hmm Definitely needed the sugar. Mm hmm I don't know what it tastes like before, but. That sugar gave it that, ah. We call it that, yeah. It's very sweet, though. We, look, we call it that, yeah, with the, yeah. I can eat the cornbread by itself. Is that yeah? Oh, I got something. I got something mm. for you. We ain't done yet. I got something for you. We got something for you. But we're gonna eat this right here. I'm starving. All right, this is ready. All right, so we got the cornbread on the plate, everybody. Mm -hmm. He's in there cooking soup. It looked like soup, right? It looked like soup. I'm gonna get real. this bowl. I mean, this spoon right here. All right. All right, guys, let me get your plate. All right, here okay. we go. Now this, this, this the pole man, y'all. Pole man's ready? meal. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna dive. This is really good. <laughs> Poe Man meal, y'all. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, Poe Man. Let me give me a little bit. LR in the back. You you hungry? LR got you a plate. We got you a plate, buddy. So I haven't ate this in this so dude long. This took one for the team for us today. Shout out to LR. Shout out to LR. All right, I'm gonna wait for you. This looks delicious because the sauce is like melting with the cornbread. You can mm -hmm. already see the vision. Mm -hmm. Turn right. this off. Okay. So, cornbread, ground turkey, corn, looks good. The only difference <coughs> is I probably would have made the cornbread and then I would have put the sauce on top. On top? Sit on top. Well, I didn't know if you wanted it on top or not. I'm just excited. Okay. All right, here we go. Let me give me some. Cheers. Okay. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Brilliant. Quick hookup. This is actually a brilliant dish. Mm hmm No one's made this on my show. I'm surprised. Yeah, you need a real po' man. <laughs> the cornbread is slapping, Lord. Yo, this is a brilliant dish. This is genius. I'm hungry, too. I was thinking you were going to make some kind of pasta, but the cornbread with this is... Slapping. Mm. Mm. I did my job. Mm. That feel good eating it. Ten out of ten, guys. I'm not even gonna lie. This dish is fantastic. I don't know if it's because I'm starving, but the cornbread, the sweetness, the meat—it's just an amazing dish. Mm. This I should be good. like a pot pie or something. Right. You it know. Could be. Or something. It's mm -hmm. delicious. It could be. Honestly, it could be. Maybe we own something. We will call it pole man. Papa. I'm not gonna lie, I was questioning the corn, but the corn acts that adds that extra texture. Mm -hmm. I was like, why corn? It just does something for it, man. The corn is everything on this dish. Okay. Mm. You win. I got something for you. You wanna try something else? Yeah. I got a surprise for you. I'll try anything you cook at this point. Right. Invite me over to dinner. I bought something we call, it's a rendition right here. Mm. Okay. We call this Kush Kush. Kush kush. Kush kush. We're not gonna smoke, right? Mm -mm. I'm gonna use this. Milk? Yeah. Okay. You ready? Milk with our meal? Mm hmm. So we're gonna take this. Okay. Boom. Boom. 
Move this to the salad. Like and then I'm going to take some more cornbread. Hold on. Eat your cornbread. You going to eat your cornbread? I'm going to eat the cornbread. <laughs> it's so delicious. It's amazingly It's smart. that sugar, man, sets it off. Okay. Mm. Okay, and this is like a, almost like a cereal dish for us, right? So you take the cornbread. Mm -hmm. you, you break that cornbread up a little bit like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking that every house in Louisiana has cornbread. Man, it's we corn. some cornbread eating, cornbread eat some bitches. You hear me? So. Has your son had this dish? I don't think he has. He was Texas raised. Mark, well, I mean, from his, well, he was a kid when he was a baby. When he was younger, he moved over there when he was like 10. All right, so you basically just eat this like. Um, For the record, this dish is fantastic. I will make this at home. Uh, this ain't pole. This is good. This is great. I love it. We can go to a restaurant and pay for this. I'm telling you. It's good. All right. So, okay. Now okay. we got Kush. What's okay. it called? Um, kush Kush. Kush Kush. We might need spoons for this. We got spoons? Nope, we don't. Okay. Well, we can try, folks, I guess. So, the commercial, everybody. <laughs> commercial. We'll be right back. Watch how we pop back with spoons. We're back. We back. We Kush Kush. We got the spoons. All right. So, it's basically like a cereal. Okay. So, cereal. I know it sounds crazy. Okay. But it's like a dinner cereal. It definitely sounds crazy. Okay. You just have to try it out. Do you have to eat it really fast so it doesn't get soggy? Well, yeah, before it gets soggy. But you want to, like, mix oh, your not, milk. Not a crazy amount of milk. Not a crazy amount of milk. Okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't look like something I would eat, but let's try it. I'm telling you. It's that, it's that yeah, you got to chop up your, chop up your. Dude, I don't want everything to get too soggy. Okay, well, you got a little brown spots on there. Again. Just, give it a, just give it a good bite. All right. Mm. Let's see. Kush, kush. It's good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good, but I would want to eat it before it gets all soggy. Mm -hmm. Like cereal. It's brilliant, though. You know what? I, I can't even hate on it. It's too Kush -kush. <laughs> It's really good. I can eat the sauce today. Mm. You know what? I can be poor with you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. I'm not taking this government. Who came up with the Kush Kush? Man, somebody grandma. Somebody grandma. This has been around she for She was like, yeah, do you want breakfast this morning? All we got is cornbread. Corn <laughs> Put it together. Let's figure it out. This is delicious. I'm telling you. This goes way back to you. I feel like, I don't know if this dish is so delicious because I'm starving. Or if it's just genuinely it's delicious. It's genuinely good. All right, guys. Genuinely good. So out of both dishes, he gave me a full meal. He gave me dessert. Is this dessert? Like it's like a dinner dessert. I don't know what to call it. Yeah, it's delicious. Um, the meal amazing. The dessert slash cereal slash it's literally milk and cornbread in a bowl broken mm -hmm. up. It's it's good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, you should call all your dishes ten ways to make cornbread into a meal. Right. But ten out of ten. Thank you so much for cooking me dinner mm -hmm. and taking time to move around with me. No um, problem. <coughs> I had fun today. Today was so I interesting. I had a lot of fun today. I was hella stressed out, but hanging out with you and your crew and just getting to know you, you're such a sweet person. Thank you. Likewise. I, Likewise. I really believe you have a long journey to go. I did want to touch on one thing before we close out. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys can follow Suede on Instagram at God Carleon. C A R L E O N. Because my name is Leon. But so. one of the things that um, we didn't get to talk about is that you do have um, a class, or you did teach a class, or right. Was that I had a course that I did. Uh, I still have it as I haven't been as active it's on Patreon. Uh, creators course for uh, influencers and creators and upcoming sketch com comedians. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm about to do a re I'm working on a rendition of it now. The old course is in that as up to date, but it'll be out. I'll have it up in like two months. Yeah, for anybody that's looking to be in the influencer, digital, social media space, mm -hmm. I definitely advise check out the course. Mm -hmm. Check out the course, take notes, because obviously you're the way you live your life, you're constantly schooling yourself, and mm -hmm. I like that. Um, but I'm very impressed with you. And Thank you. so thankful you took time out your day to cook for me and bless our listeners with your story. Thank you for having so, me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. so keep up, y'all. Mm -hmm. Peace out. <laughs>